Welcome to the Sleepy Scotsman, where we transport you to the mystical world of Scotland's folklore, history and legends. Today, we bring you a historical tale of bravery and cunning from the many coastal regions of Scotland. Join us as we explore the rich cultural heritage of Scotland and celebrate the country's storytelling and traditions. The Herring Fisher and the Press Gang My father had gone out with a herring fleet from Campbellton, and on a certain day they were all safe in harbour at the island of Barra. They had not been there long when a man of war popped in upon them. Knowing the fate that was in store for them, the fishers took to their heels and made for the hills, with the press gang after them. Now it happened that my father had been up all night at the boat, and, when he had come ashore in the morning to the public house, he had been glad to go to rest for a while to sleep away his fatigue. So that when the press gang came, he had turned in his shirt, but his comrades gave him the note of warning and roused him from the bed, telling him that the press gang were on him. At this intelligence, my father was so alarmed that he at once jumped up and ran out of the door, and seeing that the press gang were just then being put on shore from the man of war's boat, and that not a moment was to be lost, he did not tarry by returning for his clothes, but at once set off to run to the hills in his shirt. Being thus so slightly clad and unencumbered, with superfluous apparel, and being also very strong and swift, my father soon outstripped his own companions and distanced the press gang. After he had scudded along for some distance and was getting tired with his running and could not meet with any cave or secret place wherein he dared to hide himself, he lighted upon a house, and, as it was a miserable-looking place, he made bold to lift the latch and enter without losing time by knocking or ceremony. He found two people inside the house, an old woman who was spinning and a young woman who was stirring the pot over the fire. They looked scared at seeing a man with nothing but his shirt on, thus entering in upon them so suddenly. The lassie squealed and lifting up her spoon in surprise, let the pot boil over into the fire, while the old wife nearly fell off her stool in a fright. My father was too much out of breath to waste many words in explanation, but he gasped out, The press gang, save me! And they understood him at once. Get you in here, decent man, and you shall be safe, said the old wife as soon as she could get herself together, and she led my father to a bed in a little room which had no glass window, but only a hole in the mud wall, into which straw had been thrust. My father crept into the bed and hid himself there in the darkness, listening anxiously to every sound of approaching footsteps. But he had only one fright, and that was when the good man came in from his work. All the rest of the day he was not interfered with and heard nothing of his pursuers. It was soon explained to the old man that he had got a new tenant in his house, and, as everyone hated the press gang, the good man's sympathies were at once enlisted for my father, and he brought him a good supper and a glass of whisky to keep up his courage. They had all gone to bed when, about midnight, my father heard the sound of hard English outside the house, and presently there was a great thumping at the door. My father knew at once that it was the press gang, and cast about what he should do for his escape. The thumping and the English were going on, and the old man, crying to my father to lie close, unbarred the door. 
my father heard the press gang enter and somewhat to his relief instead of asking for him they said to the old wife where is your daughter now my father understood their language but the old wife had got no english so when she caught the word daughter she fancied that they were seeking a doctor and therefore she replied Chanil Dotterancho which means there is no doctor here. The press gang did not understand her and they pushed about looking for the daughter. Her bed was just on the other side of the thin partition against which my father had crept and he could hear her trembling all over while the men were searching the rest of the room. They soon found her and the poor lassie set up a great scream as they dragged her forth. My father thought that the noise that was being made would be favourable for his escape. So, as he could not render any help to the lassie, he pushed the straw out of the hole in the mud wall and squeezed himself with some difficulty through the narrow aperture and took to running with the greatest speed. But before he had got many yards from the house, and before he had lost the hearing of the poor lassie's cries, he heard a great shout, and found that he had been discovered by one of the press gang who had, perhaps, been left outside the house to keep watch. It was a bright moonlight night, and my father wished that his shirt had been anywhere else than on his back for it mainly assisted to guide his enemies in their pursuit. Half a dozen of them now were in pursuit of him, shouting and yelling and even firing pistols at him, although perhaps this was only to intimidate him. As his shirt made him to be so conspicuous in the moonlight, my father thought that it would be the best plan to throw it away and run in his buff, and this he did. This proceeding probably saved him. For his pursuers made for his shirt, imagining, most likely, that he was inside it and had fallen from exhaustion. And my father, at the same time, had doubled like a hare in the other direction. Thus, his pursuers were thrown off the scent, and, as good luck would have it, they took the very opposite road to that which my father took. And one of the men fell over a rock, crying, My bones are broken! My father travelled on until he met a haystack, where he made a place for himself. But he did not remain in it for long, for he began to feel very cold. So, as all seemed safe, he crept out and once more took to running until he came to a barn and there he covered himself with straw and remained till daylight. When the farmer came to the barn in the morning he was greatly surprised to find a naked man lying asleep amidst the straw and crying out that it was a murder he with his noise not only brought his men to his assistance but also aroused my father from his heavy slumber. My father was more frightened than the farmer and his men, for at first he imagined that they were the press gang, and he would have once more taken to running if he had seen any hole or door through which he could have escaped, but there was none, so he jumped out of the straw, intending to ask the farmer for protection. But when the farmer and his men saw a wild-looking, stark-naked man thus advancing upon them with straws sticking in his hair, they viewed him in the light of an imbecile or a lunatic, and snatched up forks wherewith to defend themselves from his attacks. Of course, each side soon found out the mistake they were making and when my father explained to them how it was that he came to be dressed in his buff, the farmer at once understood all about it, 
and gave him his coat to wrap around his loins like a kilt and led him to his house, which was close at hand. There he furnished my father with a full suit of the highland garb until he should get his own clothes. And he also set before him a good breakfast and sent one of his men to spy out if the man of war was still off the island. When it was reported to have sailed, my father knew that he was safe, and he therefore bade farewell to the friendly farmer and went back to the boats, where he found that nearly all of his companions had been captured by the press gang and taken on board the man of war. The shortness of hands obliged him to do double work, and as they left the island the next day, he was unable to search out the house in which he had first taken refuge and to learn what had befallen the poor lassie. My father did not afterwards take a part in the herring fishery voyages, so that he escaped any further adventures with the press gang. Thank you for joining us on The Sleepy Scotsman. We hope you've enjoyed this tale of Scotland's coastal history. Be sure to like the video if you enjoyed it, or subscribe to our channel. And if there's any other tales that you would like us to tell, please leave a comment and let us know. Until next time, all the best.